In this video, we're going to take a look at modeling with Fusion 360 forms and ways in which we can get around some problems that are introduced when bridging bodies together. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to talk about using some tools such as Bridge and Extrude that we've already explored in several videos, but we're gonna take a little bit of a different approach and design something by using separate control bodies. And what I mean by that is we're gonna start creating some of the critical shapes of a design and then connect them together. So let's start by creating a form and I'm gonna begin first by creating a cylinder. Just select any plane you want. In my case, I'm gonna select the right plane and just draw a cylinder. I am going to turn off symmetry. I don't want any symmetry for this example. And we're going to use eight diameter faces. And we'll just use two height faces for now. So this is the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to move this around to some other location. So let's use modify, edit form, view it from the front or the back, and just simply move it and rotate it a little bit. Next, we wanna create a couple more cylinders. So we can do this by either creating more cylinders or we can select bodies and we can simply copy using Control V and Control uh, C if you're on a PC and then we can move it to a new location, sort of rotate it around. So I'm gonna just put it there, say okay, and I'm gonna do it one more time. This time I'm gonna move it, I'm gonna rotate it slightly and then we'll just sort of move it up. So now this is a very basic start to three form bodies that we want to connect together. A problem that we have when we have a design like this is we can't simply go into modify and use something like bridge because bridge isn't going to allow us to select three edges to blend together. So a way in which we can do this is we can learn to bridge just some selected edges and we don't have to do an entire design. Remember that when we use bridge between an entire face, it will delete that face and it'll patch it with the new extruded edges. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select modify and bridge, and we're gonna start simply by going from these two edges as side one and these two edges as side two. Notice right now that this is straight. So what I wanna do is I wanna reduce this to the number one because I wanna be able to control the curvature. I wanna add edges when I need to, and I don't wanna add them right now. So we're just gonna say, okay. Notice that this added a crease because I had the, the option to maintain a crease turned on. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna just uncrease that to start. We're gonna repeat the process. Let's use bridge one more time. And again, we're gonna select these two edges as side one, as side two, again, pick the matching edges. Again, we're gonna use one division. This time I'll turn maintain crease off. And you can see that we were, we're starting to sort of bridge these together. On the bottom section, we can use the same exact technique or we could manually extrude. If we wanted to control that geometry a little bit more, what we could do is we could select those edges. We could go to modify. And again, make sure that you're working in a planar fashion. I'm gonna hold down alt so I keep it smooth and extrude it. Then I'm gonna use scale to get those edges vertical. Again, we wanna get it close to zero. We can manually enter the value of 0 0.01 or something close to zero. And then now we've created sort of that edge. It's still selected, so I wanna go back into modify. I wanna bring this down over to this side and I'll say, okay. Now I can use my weld vertices. I do prefer this over using something like merge edge, just because when we're welding vertices, it is, it's a little bit more control for me. When we're welding edges or merging edges, oftentimes I find that the vertices, when we're doing more than one edge, the vertices don't quite line up. So now at this point, we've sort of started defining the shape and we have a couple considerations that we need to think about. For filling this in, we have to consider the number of faces or edges that we're trying to build. So we've got two here and we've got two on each of the other cylinders that we extruded. We've got two on the bottom, and then we've just got these ones on the side. So a good thing that I like to do when I'm trying to figure out how to fill these shapes in is I'm gonna start by double clicking that edge. I'm gonna to go to Modify Edit Form, and I'm gonna use Alt and sort of scale this inward. 
And the reason that I like to do this, and I'm not going to do it all the way, but I want to just show a little bit about the way in which these are starting to pull together. So these are very clean up top. They're very clean here, but you can see how it's starting to sort of crease here because of where all these edges are. So as I extrude this down or I scale it down, then I can use the scale tool to sort of, again, get really close to 0 0.001. And that gives me a nice flat face, and it looks pretty good here. So this is generally going to be my first step to try to patch this geometry. Then I'm gonna go back to my front view and maybe move this up a little bit. I wanna to try to get it sort of in between everything. I don't want it to be too close to the bottom because then it's gonna start bunching those surfaces up. And honestly, scaling it up a little bit after you flatten it can be a good thing to help sort of reduce that shape. If it needs to bulge out, again, this is a good time for us to do that. If we want to pull it out in space a little bit, maybe pull it back in just a little bit. And now we have a fairly good result. We still have to patch that hole though. So let's go to modify and let's try to use fill hole. When we do that, we have three separate options, reduce star, fill star, and we have collapse. Now it's important when we use collapse, we wanna make sure that we have weld vertices turned on because that weld center vertice is important. And otherwise, each of those individual triangles that are created will have its own vertex at the center. And if they're not connected, then it becomes very problematic for the curvature and just simply controlling it. So when we are thinking about the way in which we wanna patch something like this, we really wanna avoid star points if we can. So we want to keep those four-sided faces or patches. And when we have a situation like this with a collapsed star, this is basically like the top of a sphere or the top of a sort of a filled in cylinder. And we have a lot of edges coming here, which means that we're never going to get a great result for the surface. If we do a fill star, you'll notice that it simply fills it in and it leaves the center open. Now, while the geometry doesn't look great right now, this gives us a little bit more control for figuring out where we want those edges to connect. So I'm going to use this fill star option, and then I'm going to begin going to modify and insert point and just connecting points that I know should be connected. And you can see just connecting those two center ones already made this look a lot better. Right now, we've got one, two, three, four, five, and six edges over here. So I'm going to repeat that insert make sure that we have nothing selected, but repeat that insert point. And I'm gonna take this one down to this one and hit enter. And I'm gonna repeat that process over here. We don't have symmetry on, so we, we're gonna to have to do that. And now you can see that we've got one, two, three, and four. So this gave us that four-sided. And if we go to a box display mode, we can kind of see what this looks like. When we view it in box display mode, the four-sided face that we have here looks more like a triangle. So this tells me what I wanna do is I sort of wanna retopologize this. And I'm gonna do that by inserting a point, just coming down somewhere on this face and back over and saying, okay. Then I wanna delete these edges. I'm still keeping it four-sided, but now I'm turning it into more of a four-sided patch. If we take a look at this in smooth display mode, they don't look very different, but if we try something like zebra stripes, let's go ahead and change the direction and let's increase these. Sometimes if you take a look at this with something like zebra stripes, you can kind of see that this patch or this face, let's say okay, just to lock it in, this face over here, you can kind of see right outside of it that the zebra stripes have this extra little bump or curve. And that's because this face itself is, is not inherently bad, but it is causing some potential problems with this point here, this point that comes in. And if we take a look at this in box display mode, that's because these are a straight line. If we look at it over here and we sort of rotate this around, you can see that we don't really have that same issue. This looks very smooth over here coming into and out of that vertex. So this is something that we need to consider and that the fact it doesn't really look very different, but when we look at the zebra stripes and we look at the curvature, you can see that there is a tiny little jog here, but you can kind of tell over here that the curvature is different. Now, we don't have symmetry turned on, so that is certainly something that we can do and we can, we can spend the time just controlling it on one side. But let's repeat that process just to make sure that we understand it. So we're gonna to go to insert point, 
Again, we're going to pick where we want those new edges to be. Then we're going to select the old ones and just hit delete to get rid of them. And that's a quick way for us to sort of fix that. We can do the same thing by potentially coming over here, maybe bringing this down and then selecting these edges. And again, I'm going to go ahead and just grab those three and hit delete. Again, this is now more than four sides, right? So we've got one, two, three, four on the bottom, and then we've got the two sides. So we want to use insert point and we want to connect those together. Let's go back, take a look at it in smooth display, control or command four, and we can see that looks pretty good. We could spend more time sort of fixing that, but it looks pretty good. The last tip that I want to leave you with something like this is if you get to a point where you've added too many edges and you've sort of designed yourself into a corner, the geometry doesn't look good, just go ahead and delete ones that you don't need and come back and, and sort of fix them later, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna delete everything on the right-hand side. I'm gonna leave this left-hand side alone, but we're gonna delete those. And now we're left with this one big face that has way too many edges. And what we need to do when we're in a case like this is we need to begin figuring out where those need to go. Now, it ends up needing to connect here, but unlike other programs, we can't just place a point in the middle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some temporary edges in. So I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna put a, an edge here. And of course, what I did was I made a triangle, but the reason I'm doing this is because now I can just pick a midpoint and I can come down to here. And now I'm able to sort of re-topologize that. So again, using insert point, maybe I wanna go straight over and straight up, and then I can get rid of the edges I didn't want. So it takes a little bit of work, but spending the time to figure out where these edges need to go in order to get a good shape can really save you a lot of time. So you can see now we've got one, two, three, and four. This is much easier for us to control. And if we take a look at it in smooth display mode, you can see that it introduced a little bit of problem, but oftentimes going into repair body can help us fix those star points and those errors. And we'll allow it to clean it up. I'm gonna use control or command four, and you can kind of see that we've created a, a different patch. And I think we need to spend, you know, realistically, if I was working on this design, I would spend more time dividing this up in the middle, making another four-sided patch in the middle. But right now, that is a solution. So we've got a four-sided here, we've got a four-sided here, four here, and four here. So again, play around with this. Don't be afraid to delete edges and, and sort of change the way that the shape works because oftentimes that's gonna be the best way to progress forward with a design like this. This is just, you know, sort of a nondescript simple example, but this can apply to pretty much anything. Oftentimes when you're trying to patch geometry together or, or put something together, it, it often requires you to think about the process in a way that requires you to delete faces, delete edges, use tools like fill and bridge or extrude, and then work yourself into a situation where you're happy with the layout of all the edges. Now, as I said, I'm, I'm not happy with the layout of this. I would spend more time figuring this out. I would probably cut this through the middle and take it down to this point to give me a little bit more control. But I don't think there's any value in continuing to do that. I really think that self-exploration on designs like this is really where the learning is gonna come from. So spend some time, delete some edges, add some new ones. If they don't work, then go back and, and delete them again. And always remember that if you can use things like insert edge, that is going to be the best solution to help maintain clean, consistent geometry. It doesn't always work, but in some cases, making sure that insert edge is used is, is going to be the best way forward. While we're still here, I know I was gonna end the video, but let's just go ahead and explore that real quick just to make sure that you have that in your toolkit. So insert edge, I'm gonna select this one here. And notice that it's going the wrong direction. So I'm gonna say minus 0.5, put it right in the middle. And notice that it didn't give me anything. So it didn't give me anything. Let's try one more time, insert edge, try here. And again, we're gonna increase it, noticing that it's not going in the right direction. It's not letting me come to this face. It's, it's not working. So this is one of those cases where it doesn't really let you do it. And that's where you have to go back and use things like insert point 
divide this up. Now we've, you know, we're, we're trying to get into a situation where we can sort of fix this patch. And you can see it's not even letting me use that. If I try to go to smooth display mode, it won't even let me go to smooth display mode. So a way forward would be to try to insert an edge based on, the, based on these. So let's go to modify, insert edge, select these two, and I wanna pull them down to minus 0.5. I'm gonna put it right in the middle. Hit enter, and now I was able to divide that up here. This gives me a reference point. I can use insert point. I can take it to whatever location I want. If it's the midpoint of this design, I'll do that right there. This gets me back to smooth display. Again, it's not fixed yet, but we created a four-sided face right here. And now we've just got this five-sided or six-sided one that we have to deal with. Then we can come in and, and try to use insert edge, see if we can get one that is halfway. Again, if it doesn't work, let's go ahead and do minus 0.5 again. So now we are able to insert that edge and I can carry that up the design if I want. Once again, I can I can sort of pick the midpoint, come straight up and say, okay. So again, four sides, four sides. The stuff over here still needs additional work. We would need to use insert point, come from here. We could potentially make uh, four sides over here, four sides here, and again, carry that up. So as, as we're playing around with these designs, remember that adding those sometimes requires you to use make uniform and sometimes requires you to go into the repair bodies. Lots of red star points, lots of T points, but allowing it to repair can get you into a situation where you're potentially okay with it. You can see here that we've got something that ends right in the middle. It doesn't like that. So we'd have to go back and simply go to the midpoint, say, okay. And that sort of cleans that geometry up a little bit. We can carry that over and repeat it on the other side as well. But it's always a good idea to play around with these. And remember, if you design yourself into a corner, use undo, use delete edges, play around with how these are patched and just try to begin to understand. And it takes, I just cannot stress this enough that it takes a lot of time and every design is gonna be a little bit different. So always shoot for four-sided faces. If you, if you can make that happen, shoot for four-sided faces. If you can't, then use triangles but try to avoid anything more than four sides. So there are situations where five sides will work, but honestly, a triangle is usually a better option than a five-sided face. A triangle is going to give you a better result than having a five-sided face. We do have the option in Fusion 360 to have these T points, and it is able to solve those relatively well in a lot of cases. Uh, we can convert them to star points and T points back and forth and kind of see, you know, how they work. I don't recommend relying on that. Note that you can do it. I don't recommend just using it as, um, as a design requirement. I recommend using it as a potential fallback. If you can't get around the way that you're patching a design, then use it for that. In this instance, again, I've sort of designed myself into a situation where I'm not happy with the shape, but it's part of the process of learning. You might figure out that the edge flow isn't working and you might need to scrap, you know, we might need to scrap these faces and just simply start again using things like extrude or scale or just bridging or filling holes. It doesn't matter if you do that. It doesn't mean that you failed on the design. It just means that you need to take a step back and really think about the way that these faces are, uh, are sort of progressing and then, you know, find a design path forward. That's going to be it for this design. And again, it was really sort of a nondescript way that we could talk about putting everything together, working on the patch layout, understanding how we can bridge these shapes together, and ultimately figure out ways in which we can continue to refine these designs. That's going to be the, the part that is going to be the most difficult, is refining the designs, figuring out what works, and figuring out what doesn't work. So if you have any questions, please let me know. And as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.